Trump has not broken above 50 percent in approval rating no matter what happens. Um, he might have had a, missed an opportunity on on the last night of the convention with a speech which reminded the people a lot about about his old self. He's beatable. Biden beat him, for God's sake. As MAGA Republicans scrambled to come up with an effective line of attack against Vice President Kamala Harris, they were hit with devastating news from a Fox News host who reminded them that Trump is very beatable. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to look at in this video. As a reminder, I'm not feeling particularly well, so if I sound strange, just please bear with me. One of the best things for me personally, one of the things that brings me enormous satisfaction is when you occasionally have bursts of sanity and reality checks coming from the Fox Propaganda Network to other hosts on the Fox Propaganda Network and to Fox viewers and MAGA Republicans in general. And what we're having here, what I'm about to show you, is one of those reality checks from uh, a longtime Fox News host, Britt Hume, uh, who is giving... MAGA Republicans a reminder that despite what they may think personally about their cult leader, Donald Trump, the reality is very different. Well, I think it changes. It takes the age issue off the table. It takes the issue that crippled Joe Biden off the table. So that's a plus for the Democratic side. Uh, her reputation as a lightweight uh, is, is still intact, I think. And you know, there are more formidable candidates that I can think of, and so can probably you and everyone on our group today think of. On the other hand, she has assets. Um, you know, she's youthful, she's energetic at least. And remember this, the key to this race is really that, as, as, uh, as we were just hearing, is Trump. Trump has not broken above 50% in approval rating no matter what happens. And the, and the gains that have been made by his side have been all Biden and his ticket sliding down. Uh, he hasn't been able to build on that yet. He had an opportunity to do that at the convention, and maybe he did. We'll see what the polling says over the next several weeks. Um, he might have had a, missed an opportunity on, on the last night of the convention with a speech which reminded the people a lot about, about his old self, uh, of his old self. So, and remember, he, he's beatable. Biden beat him, for God's sake. Um, and the premise of Biden's campaign was that he could beat him again. And until Joe Biden became obviously incapacitated, he might have done so. So obviously the, the odds favor the Republicans at this point. Uh, but let's wait and see, because uh, even Kamala Harris, with all her in, infirmities uh, that she showed in the, in the primaries in 2020, um, would still have a chance against a candidate that can't crack 50 percent. Ouch. That's brutal. I mean, we could probably just end the video there. It's always good. It's always more effective when you hear it from somebody who hates President Biden and hates Vice President Kamala Harris, which Brick Hume obviously does. Um, but he's laying it out. He's like, listen, Donald Trump is not popular. He's not popular. He has never been popular. And this is just a fact. I understand that MAGA Republicans and centrists, they have this lionized, beatified view of Trump. But he never cracked 50 percent when he was president. President Biden came into office and for the first several months of his presidency, had an approval rating in the high 50s, okay? Biden, at his most popular, was objectively more popular than Donald Trump, to say nothing of the fact that he beat him by 7 million votes uh, in the 2020 election. Donald Trump has always been an unpopular, divisive president. And think about it. Think about the advantages that he has now. He's been out of office for four years. America's memory tends to be very short-term, very limited. We tend to look back on things with nostalgia. And despite all of these, despite an assassination attempt, which tends to, I mean, historically speaking, create at least a temporary boof, a boost of um, uh, popularity. Trump has only now cracked 40% approval, 40%, and he was nearly killed by an assassin. That is how unlikable Donald Trump objectively is. So what Britt Hume is saying is like, listen, whatever you think of Kamala Harris, and clearly he doesn't think much of her, Trump is absolutely beatable by Harris. And we'll get into some of the polls that have come out since the vice president became the presumptive Democratic nominee. But I also want to play this clip from a recent Piers Morgan panel. And again, it was another pro-Trump, anti-Biden panel in which progressive commentator Jenk Uger, who hates President Biden, um, he also brought a reality check to people who might not otherwise believe it, that Donald Trump is just not a popular guy. Uh, but Donald Trump's numbers are terrible as well. They're usually hovering around the high 30s, low 40s. These are terrible numbers. You guys can use all the anecdotes you like. And, and Vinny... 
Brother, I got respect for you, too, even though you say crazy uh, conspiracy theories. I get it. We're both populists. We want the right thing for the American people. But you're in a bubble, brother. Just because you love Trump and everyone you know loves Trump doesn't mean that the country does. 55 percent of the country hates Trump. We just have to put a non-establishment candidate up and we'd win easily. Again, you can see it on the the guy's face. Vinny is the person uh, beside Jenk. I mean, he's like purple with rage, right? Because he's a Trump cultist. It's true. A lot of Trump uh, cultists believe that Trump is this popular figure. He's not. He's never been, and he never will be. If an assassination attempt can't, you know, boost his numbers, if the RNC, which usually, I mean, it's this, you know. Um, rock concert style convention for politics. I mean, the Republicans definitely put a lot of pomp and circumstance into it. And even that hasn't really increased his poll numbers. People have their minds made up on Donald Trump. The question is, how does he compare to the alternative? And the vice president has historically been not particularly popular, but there's evidence, strong evidence to suggest that people can move on Kamala Harris. Doesn't mean they will, but that they can, that they are open to liking her more. Whereas Donald Trump you know, his numbers are effectively set in stone. And so his prayer should be that Vice President Harris doesn't maximize her potential because Trump's potential politically is capped. He's done. His numbers are basically set in stone. The question is, can the vice president make up ground and achieve her political potential? A couple of things to note. Kyle Griffin reported this. Vote.org announced a nearly 700% increase in daily voter registrations. More than 38,500 new registrations in the 48-hour period following President Biden's announcement that he wasn't seeking re-election. This figure marks the single largest number of voter registrations over a 48-hour period during the 2024 cycle. Younger voters between 18 and 34 accounted for 83% of new voter registrations. Now, this is correlation, not causation, but it does seem to suggest that once people became aware that President Biden wasn't going to seek a second term, it has energized potential eligible voters such that they are registering. And we know how Republicans look at voter registration and maximum voter turnout. We've talked about this in previous videos. Trump, Lindsey Graham, Mitch McConnell, a whole host of prominent Republican politicians have said over years that if voting is made easier and if eligible voter turnout is maximized, they, Republicans, feel that they are at a disadvantage, which makes sense because their policies tend to be wildly unpopular. So that is one omen that is does not bode well for the Republicans. Another omen which doesn't bode particularly well for the Republicans is recent polling. So Morning Consult just came out. It's one of the most reputable polls. And Vice President Harris is leading Donald Trump by one point. That's within the margin of error. But that shows, again, it suggests that there is more potential positivity for Harris than there was for President Biden or Donald Trump. As a matter of fact, uh, Newsweek just published this, that Donald Trump is losing to Vice President Harris in three national polls. Um, is leading former President Trump in three national polls. Um, while Trump has consistently led both Harris and Biden in most national polls in three polls this month, all conducted before Biden stepped down, Harris narrowly led Trump in a hypothetical head-to-head with each of her leads falling within the margin of error. Um, you have Marist for NPR and PBS News. Uh, is one of them. You have ABC Ipsos as well. And then um, ABC News as well by Ben Dixon and Armandi International. All of these polls, uh, these recent polls, show that the vice president is leading Donald Trump. Again, within the margin of error, we can should take nothing for granted, but we have more potential on our side than Trump. Trump has basically hit the ceiling for support. People don't like him. The question is, can they like Vice President Harris more than Trump or dislike her less than Trump? And there's evidence to show that that's the case. Millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars have been raised in the mere days since Vice President Harris became the presumptive Democratic nominee. It is a staggering fundraising sum. So between the polls, the voter registration, the fundraising as well, folks, the momentum is on our side and we haven't even hit the Democratic National Convention yet. The RNC was a was a spectacle for Republicans, which only had the potential to benefit them. And then, of course, Donald Trump came in and rather than try to make a unifying speech. And, and this is what Britt Hume was talking about as well, that the RNC typically sees, uh, you know, polls favor Republicans because, again, it's it's this high profile rock star 
rock concert-like spectacle that people tend to like. But as Britt Hume noted, Donald Trump probably undermined whatever momentum he had from that because he was given an opportunity to basically rebrand himself as a unifier post-assassination attempt, and he couldn't stick with it for three minutes. And then he went wildly off script, went off prompter, started attacking prominent Democrats, insulting people, bringing up divisive, unpopular policies because he's just a divisive and unpopular person. So you think about the momentum we have now, again, in terms of fundraising, polls, voter registration, and then the DNC is coming up in the next couple of weeks. There's enormous opportunity for us folks. There really is. There is reason to have hope. And I love the fact that Fox News hosts are calling out Trump in front of Fox News viewers and other hosts and saying, listen, whatever you think about this guy, he is very, very beatable, even by somebody you despise as much as Vice President Kamala Harris. Great stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments.